have, I'm going to say this wrong, Stefan Sam. Uh, he is the founder of Jolin.io. Uh, and he is talking about juliascript.jl. Please take it away. Thank you so much, Julian. Yeah, welcome. Thank you for your attendance. I built juliascript.jl to finally yeah, have Julia scripts which actually run fast. There are a couple of things to it. And yeah, and you'll see there are actually three steps how we can speed up things. They are kind of the usual steps, but it's still really cool to see the differences. And I hope that further Julia versions will improve even further. It's a short part, first a kind of couple of words, but then we look into the concrete executions. So it's really just an executable like Julia. Instead of Julia, you write Julia script and then your script. And you pass further arguments as you want. It's really kind of intended to be as simple as possible. And the first time you run it, it will create a module for you, a Julia module, a Julia package, which does then uh, part of the compilation, pre-compilation. And the second time, it uses this. It's still not doing everything, um, but it's doing kind of quite something. And there are kind of two layers to it. The first thing is that you, if you call Julia script, it's a, it's a bash script to yeah, have it kind of really being fast and no overhead on this side. And then there's kind of a library which does also the caching. And then finally, um, the module caching is done via just tracking the tr yeah, tracing all the compilation steps, saving this in a, in a big pre-compiled statement file, and then pre-compiling pre this. Has an advantage of being um, good in interaction with the package compiler. Maybe you have used that. But I'm also using the pre-compile tools, which you should have known about since Julia 1.9, widespread. And there, the recompile invalidations macro is kind of a little extra thing which we can do. But let's, let's look into a concrete example so that you get an, an idea. So I have here this, this little Mandelbrot script, which I just took from Julia Discourse. And it's just doing kind of some Mandelbrot computation. We could have put this as an arc parse.jl thing or similar. And finally, we are storing kind of this figure as a PNG. And if we are going to run this with normal Julia, then this time it's kind of already the best it can get. Because if I'm doing this, I'm using kind of my main Julia environment. Yeah? So this is now using Julia 1.10 environment on my system. I have all the packages already installed. So using Julia, I need to make sure that all this is kind of fine. And yeah, I can even make it a bit larger. And we are, yeah, 3.2 seconds. And if we, if we run with Julia script, um, the first time, it's going to do a little bit more. It's creating this module, doing the tracing tracking all the compilation statements. And then afterwards, but in the background, it then runs the pre-compilation now. So that this is also kind of already done the second time you call it. It's an overhead. We have eight seconds on the first time. And if we run it again now, very same command, we, we actually get an improvement. Yeah? So it's, a, it's slightly something. It's only a, a trivial example. The more code you have, the bigger is this improvement you get now. So it's really kind of using the package precompilation. And because everything is stored in such a big file of precompiled statements, what we can do in addition is to, to hook into the package compile ecosystem and actually create a sysimage from, from this data. So it surprised myself. But so actually kind of having all the pre-compiled statements brought into the big sys image really gives another improvement. So this will take some time. <laughs> so I'm not sure whether you've done this already. Um, so last time I ran this, it took like uh, four minutes, maybe a bit less. So building this image is kind of an overhead. And you see also, if someone knows about this, 
um, there's an, an error happening. It's not fatal. But if someone knows, yeah, concurrency violation error, deadlock detected, and loading unit for late um, If the package author is here, that could be something which we can solve. Anyway, it's not crucial. The, the compilation still happens. And yeah, and then the next time kind of it finds the sys image, it will take this, and we can then compare um, the timings. And to give you now kind of this a bit the insight, what's going on under the hood, um, I want to show you kind of the, yeah, that there's kind of a special directory. Um, this is it. So under Julia scripts cache, all these different cache modules are stored. And you see that they have the, the, the file name in the front and then a hash, which is the hash of the script. So as soon as you change kind of something in the script, a new module will be generated and compiled for you. This is the way it works. And having the file name up front makes it easy kind of for debugging these things. And if you look into it, um, then you see it's really just a normal script. And as soon as the sysimage compilation is done, we also see the sysimage over here. And you can imagine that uh, yeah, somewhere you, these things stack up, and you can simply kind of also clear out this directory, and yeah, the caching would be redone the next time. OK, two minutes. We have other two minutes. OK, so um, this is kind of the key thing. You can also activate that the package compilation is triggered every time by setting an environment, um, environment variable. Take a look at the website, at the GitHub site. So that's pretty easy. And yeah, and to add in the future, there's kind of Windows support needed. And also, the famous Comunicon package does not work yet so far. I need to do some macro expansion to make this work as well. And yeah, that's, that's about it. Let me see. OK. I hope it's done after your question. <laughs> Let me take a look. OK, so thank you. We have time for one question, I guess. <laughs> Let's have a round of applause for Stefan Sam. We have time for maybe one or two questions. One question right here. Right in the middle. Please go ahead. <laughs> Have you, without the package compiler, I, I assume you've benchmarked what is the remaining time mostly due to? I'm guessing it's actually just package loading, right? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I'm not so much into the details, unfortunately. I would like to have an answer to that. Yeah, it okay. must be some, something with loading. I'm, I'm unfamiliar, and it's a pretty big yeah, yeah. This thing missing. So we are 1.2 versus 2 dot something seconds, so it's just even half it by just putting all the pre-compiled statements into the sys image. So there's yeah, a lot going on still. I mean, the, the big difference is, is that when you build a sys image, you don't have to check for invalidations when you load all the packages, because you, you write the sys image after all the invalidations have happened. Yeah. So you do, but but if you load them as separate packages, you have to check each individual package, and that's the main bottleneck in package loading. Yeah. Thank you for the comment. One further question. Yeah. Um, so if I understand correctly, you get a new package every time that you change the script, right? Yes. So this would be then more of a tool to use when you finish your script, when it can take like a month line arguments and stuff, uh, and not really for during development. Yeah, so it's not, not a big overhead. Yeah, we could improve this probably to have a bit more kind of a, a balance between these cases. But so far for my development, it was totally fine. As you see, tracing is only small overhead if you use it the first time. And anyway, this, the speed up is needed if you want to run the, the script again and again and again. So there, you really want to have optimal performance. Like I want to trace my whole system for some certain files and want to have the scan being super fast. OK, um, thanks. Thank you. Let's have another round of applause.